to this is your boy passport bro wingman coming at you again with another video and um, today's video um, is pretty much a response video to a comment I heard on um, Austin Holloway's channel um, he had a video in which he was having naysayers pull up and you know kind of give their responses and that kind of thing and one of the concerns that came up was one guy said he, he understands what Passport Bros are doing and what a lot of guys are doing, but only thing he can't respect is that um, he feels that a lot of Passport Bros, were, that in general, were just fleeing the country, we're leaving our responsibilities at home, um, and we're pretty much going to another country where the culture there is already established and the women are, and the men already there have set up things so that the women are you know, uh, feminine there, submissive, that kind of thing. And he's saying, why don't we just, in general, stay in the U.S., um, you know, fix things here so that we don't have to, to leave, that that kind of thing. So um, that, that, was his, that was his main concern. So that's what this video is kind of addressing. So I kind of wanted to address that and um, at first say that, um, one, I, I don't believe that Passport Bros, include myself, I don't believe that we're cowards. This is, this is not a cowardly type of flea has nothing to do with um, us not being able to handle women or, you know, and I, I even hate using that word, but us not be able to deal with our women and, and, and you know, kind of mold them and all this kind of stuff like that. In general, um, it's just more, in my, my opinion, more practical just to do that for, for several reasons. First of all, um, the way the government, first of all, the U.S. government intervenes in the household's in America versus in some of these other countries, there's not as much government intervention. And what I mean by that, for example, um, in America, we have public housing, you have food kitchens, you have food stamps, uh, you have WIC, um, of course, you have, you know, child support. Um, in addition to that, there's various programs that will give women um, funds for, you know, daycare. Um, you know, we have unemployment, you know, um, you know, also, you know, many programs for women to, you know, uh, you know, giving them additional grants and money to go to school, you know, why they have children, that kind of thing. There's, you know, tax credits, you know, all, all types of, you know, different things that, you know, that women will receive. Um, so in many cases, the government has kind of replaced, you know, um, women's boyfriends and their, their husbands. And, and as a result, the value of man has dramatically decreased. Also, I need to mention, which is very important, is that the U.S. government has one of the most po powerful militaries in the world. That being said, another branch of the military is the police. And, um, you know, although, you know, I have some, you know, um, you know, uh, I guess love-hate relationship with the police, you know, here in the U.S., because although they do a lot of good work, there are some things I have to give them the side eye and, you know, that kind of thing, but but in general, in comparison to the police in countries such as Colombia, Brazil, some of these other countries, I, I assure you, assure you, assure you that after dealing with the you know the police there, you will come back and really appreciate the police in the United States because they have a very good, um, they're very efficient as far as closing cases and finding the people who who've done certain things. Um, and, and I'm going to bring it up again later in my explanation as well. And when I do com my comparison to show you why that's very important. So that being said, that's one of the reasons why a lot of times women, they've kind of feel that they don't really need you in a sense, as Kevin Samuels would have said, um, men have civilized, you know, you know, some of these Western countries so well that the women actually feel like they don't necessarily need a man but all all they would have to really do is travel down to one of these other countries where they're not where it's not built up the infrastructure is not as strong and they will clearly see the potential of what a man can do in a woman's life and the need for for men in their life and and in those countries is very is more efficient and it's more natural for women to to roll back into her feminine frame into a feminine role and let men kind of take the lead because things in those areas you know, though, you know, because these other countries, these second world countries, third world countries, things are very, very tough. And it's very stressful being a man. It's very stressful taking the leadership role. And 
Um, and as a result, you know, a lot of women will prefer to, you know, stay, you know, be in their feminine frame and let the man kind of take over and, and do his thing. Versus here in America, we've kind of propped things up so well that, you know, um, a strong male presence is not really needed when you have so much government intervention. So, for example, here in the, in the States, if a woman in her young, younger years, she sleeps around, she sleeps about three, four different dudes and she gets pregnant by all of them. We have programs to cover her, make sure her kids can go to school, uh, free school, free education. They're talking about some places are even talking about free college. Um, as I said before, if she loses her job, there's programs to make sure that she can't be evicted. Um, you know, and again, she'll get food stamps. Um, you know, there's really no incentive really for her to have a man. Like, what, if you think about it, you know, if a part of being a man is bringing security and also providing, if the government said I'll do all the providing, the only thing she can really look at the man for really is, you know, um, you know, sexual things or even entertainment, which is a lot of times why you see the old like, you know, cl you know I'm not gonna say class clowns, but you know, the guys that are not that intimidated or don't seem that productive. But the guy might, you know, provide her a good time going out, that kind of thing, versus her getting a guy who's hardworking. Maybe he, he works as like a carpenter, construction guy or something like that. He's working, you know, a whole bunch of hours. She might not find him as valuable because she might feel like, well, I don't really need him. I got my government check. I got EBT. What do I, what I need him for? And then, of course, with him coming in and trying to bring his masculine frame into the household and saying, okay, this is things running. She's looking at him like, I don't, I don't need to take this. I, I don't need you. So, um, that's what you're dealing with in the States. In addition to that, even if the men, the passport bros wanted to come back and I just say, we wanted to kind of really talk it out with the women or even use, you know, team up together to make sure that, that the way men want to rule is the, is the way it's going to be the United States. Keep in mind that, um, it's, it's, it's at a point now in the United States where just kind of approaching a woman or looking at her, you know, looking at her more than two seconds is like sexual harassment. Any little funny comments, you know, uh, on the job, you know, uh, and then, of course, you know, just approaching a female. Um, you got so many thirsty simps that I'd like, you know, if you, if you if you even raise your voice, you know, you got these simps that are ready to, that are ready to attack you and take you down. You know, um, and not not to mention, all she has to really do is just call the police. And especially if you're, I hate to say, you're kind of a colored person and you're dating a girl, police there, they're looking for reasons to kind of take you to jail in, in some cases, you know. But it, it's going to be very difficult. So the thing is, why deal with all that, possibly get charges, um, you know, why, why deal with all that and... and because the only because the only really thing that would kind of bring her back to her senses to kind of bring her back to her role role her feminine role is if you remember during COVID like Kevin Samuel said that was one of the first times when women you would see them at the grocery store and like like Kevin Samuel said they looked to the left they looked to the right there was no man there it was just them they had to kind of fend for themselves that was the first real reality check that they had and that's the only time when a lot of women at that point would started to realize, dang, I, I really needed a man. Now she's starting to see the value of that. The only thing that would kind of really shift things back the way it was is, I hate to say it, but some type of economical disaster would have to happen. Something such as a, a major food shortage. And I'm not talking like a few months. Let's just say like a year or so. Or the U.S. dollar crashes or something like that. But my question to you would be... Uh, you know, because it's kind of seem. If you think about it, it's kind of simpish. You know, would you really want to crash your economy just to just to have an opportunity to date some of the women here that you want, or would it be easier just to leave things as they are, make your money, build yourself up here, and just you know, if you you know, if you can't find the small percentage, because there's a, maybe there's a there's a remnant of women that do stick to traditional roles. You have some YouTubers, you know, in general that I've seen where you know you have some women that kind of respect. And, and prefer to be in a film role, but but I, I I think these women are the minority. I'm going to say about 25 percent. So if you can't find that 25 percent, I would encourage you get your passport, find a woman overseas, whether it's in the Philippines, you know, you find a woman in Thailand, um, you know, uh, Brazil, Peru, uh, of course Colombia, Dominican Republic, Mexico, or something like that, you know. Um, 
because the thing is, you know, because even with the people saying that the men in these other countries have really enforced and, you know, have kind of molded their women to be this way. The thing is, um, nature itself, nature in the way that these countries are governed have built the culture in a way where it's kind of like on um, almost on autopilot. They don't the men that actually don't have to do a whole lot. Versus in the states, you have we, it, you you pretty much are fighting the government in a sense. You pretty much will be fighting the government, and also um, the government, the culture, and and I haven't even gotten to the point, haven't even brought in the uh, you know the statistical data as far as um, excuse me, someone is sorry about that. Um, yeah, I haven't haven't even really brought in the statistical data as far as um. You know, there's a large percentage of, of the women here that in the United States that are o o overweight and obese that men won't even date, which as a result, it, it makes it very competitive for any woman that's somewhat attractive or even just skinny. In general, a woman would just have to be skinny to be, you know, to have male suitors. So it's actually a smaller, it kind of shrinks the pool. So it already makes things already competitive and it, it creates a, a pool of simps here. So, um... So you'll be have you have to combat the simps, the government, and the, and then just in general you would have to somehow um, you know kind of convince the women in general that this is the better approach for them. And and the fact that Kevin Samuels had tried this for so long and got very little, um, we were able to convince a very small pool of women. It's just not really worth it when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. Versus in other countries, as I said before. Um, and I, I, I've dated several women in Colombia and they've, you know, told me there's not like, for example, here we have like secondhand shops where people give away clothing there. There's not really any of that, you know, if you consider the fact that in a lot of these countries, almost like, for example, I believe in Peru, I think it was about like a third of the people are unemployed, both men and women. Um, in addition to that, um, inflation is high. Uh,